Hi, I'm Peachy. Hi, I'm Jeff. And today we are joined by our first returning guest, Bob Naismith. Yes, I'm, I'm back, as they say. Return. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming back on. Uh, no problem. No. We obviously didn't put you off for the first time, so that's... Uh, <laughs> no, it was good fun. <laughs> the biscuits were good. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, I mean, your, your interview went down really well. Lots of people just loved listening to you talking mm, about just mm. your journey. Yeah, it was nice. Um, so, nice. yeah, we wanted you back on. You brought some stuff. We've got yes. loads of things to talk about. Yes. Cool. Uh, how have you been since... Fine, yeah. Like like many many people uh, on this island, there's this bug going around, so oh, that yeah. robbed me of my voice, and it it's really frustrating when you when your voice goes because you know there's a conversation you want to contribute, mm. and you know you just can't, and you, yeah. the frustration is you know it builds up. Thankfully, it came back about a month ago, so it's all right. Uh, well, it's for our viewers at home as well, Pat is currently ill, and he's left us in charge. <laughs> terrifying thought yes. so the, the children are in control I think I think my um, my customers in my barbershop are waiting for me to get this bag so they don't have to listen to me <laughs> no <laughs> it's, it's yeah. but yeah apart from that everything else is is is, is, is fine uh, thoroughly enjoy myself still making wee men yes um, uh, weirdly I was talking to the Andrews because I went to play Randy's oh, his I... house uh, every time I've been to Dave Andrews to play it's been a it's been a pleasure going there the first time I went I was really ill after uh, uh, and the, the last time I went, it was leaving Dave seems to be a nightmare, just journey wise. Because oh, right. the, the M1 was closed while well, the section I needed to go, I took ages Where to try is and go. He? Is oh, it's it? Mansfield way. So oh, right, okay. it's like a Pleasley Vale. It's very, oh, it's okay. very pleasant. Mm. Um, but yeah, I was talking to him mm. um, after we had you on the show, and he was just like, oh, I looked at Bob's website, he's done a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, I just sort of, you know, well, why not? You know, yeah. you know if you can, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I would sit all day making making stuff. Yeah. If I could, you know, but there's other things. Yeah, Dogs life. to be walked, yeah. life, you yeah. know, gardens. Food to eat. Yes, Ugh. you know, all Baths that. to have sleep. They're all yeah, those annoying yeah, things yeah. Get it's, um, But no, it's, it's it's wonderful and it's just nice finding finding new things, finding like minds, mm. you know. It's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, can't complain. So last time we were on the show, you mentioned about three spacemen. Now, Pat has taken some photos. They'll be inserted as yes. it goes on. Uh, and I was looking at them and obviously we'll talk bit more about mm -hmm. your approach and stuff like that but you made a very very valid point they're tiny yeah <laughs> no i mean if things were scaled that they were to these days this is imagine that. can you see that i don't know <laughs> it's tiny. tiny compared to is there a space marine uh, there's somewhere? not but there's a, a dark eldar which is supposed to be smaller than space oh, okay look yeah it's like look at the beefcake like, <laughs> ah, i could take on the astartes now wow yeah. you know and that's 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 scale creep for you i don't know <laughs> um we've got one over here so but there. yeah these were made these must date back to the 80s <laughs> oh my goodness! It's his little brother. It's bring you. It's bring your child to work That's day, right. isn't it, for Space Marine? <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? You know, that is quite a difference in scale. It is, but the, you know, the thing is that that part of what what gaming is about is the wow factor. You know, the kind of <gasps> yeah. you know, oh, I've never seen that before. Yeah, so yeah. the idea that these figures have got a little bit bigger, a little mm. bit more dramatic over the last, you know, 20, 30 years. It's not surprising, yeah. to be honest. It's good you know. for your eyesight when you're painting. You don't have to Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. In fact, with this whole digital kick that's going on, if I'm lucky enough to have people who want to paint for me, um, uh, some of them say, can you can you scale it up? Mm. So I'll do a print yeah. that's maybe 45 mil. Right, uh, okay. Just so that it's it's just easier for yeah. them to print, you know. Uh, okay, yeah, I suppose. Paint. Yeah, I mean... That kind of, uh, from my point of view, that if I was to do that for you, that mm. feels a bit of a sort of a false economy, doesn't it? Because you well, kind of <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But then for them, because at the end of the day, have. for these things, it's like just it's the image yeah. that you yeah, want, you yeah. know. And I mean, this clay, I don't know what's what size would that normally? That must be thirty. I think eight? it's like there, it's getting close. It used to be like twenty eight mil, then it went up to like thirty two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that this must be getting more big. like. Must be like 35, 36 aye, miles. Aye, yeah, aye. yeah, it's getting to the size of like the um, Marvel and the new Star Wars game, which is Crisis Protocol Shatterpoint. They're like 40 mil, so they're, right, they're so similar scale. Yeah, terrain, and that's so. maybe because that's what Workshop have done, sort of like yeah, push yeah. the scale up. I'm fine you know. with that. It's good for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny, you know, I um, a few weeks ago, I've been um, slowly, I was given it to, I was asked to paint it ages ago, and I'm slowly working my way through it. Um, 
the the only real world thing I've ever painted, which is a fox armored car. Mm. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Aye. And I'm slowly working my way through this fox, and um, and it came with a driver, mm-hmm. and I know you could have the hatch closed, and I thought, no, it's a bit more character. Yeah. You're yeah. regretting this, though, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, do you know what? I'm so regretting it because it's made out of resin that you can see through virtually, oh, and you're oh, like, oh, right. and nothing fits and it's and then all of the things like baskets and everything that come with it are all folded brass edge stuff oh uh, sure. it's just way out mm. way outside my league when i'm just going yeah pl- plastic glue you yeah, know yeah 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 and um and i've just i only go back to it every now and again mm. but I, I painted the um the driver for it mm-hmm. and i painted the driver and the face came out well and the eyes came out really mm-hmm. well and i was really pleased with it and i thought I've done a really good job of that, and I thought, and I couldn't quite figure out why it had gone so well. And then I picked it up next to a space marine. Oh, right, he's <laughs> about his his torso is like nearly twice as about it's like, bigger than a space marine uh, okay. from top to bottom. Yeah. I was yeah. like, ah, I there haven't got better. It's yeah. just got bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, fair. it takes you back to this, doesn't it? You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you would have to be painting with like a tiny little brush to get anything out of it, but. So, uh, I mean, Sorry. No, no. I was just literally looking at that and thinking that. So this is digital done, right? Aye. And that's on a com- on a computer, so mm-hmm. you can zoom in. Yes. Where this was done by eye, by hand. Yes. Yes. Aye. And it's tiny. Yes. So the detail involved, and you know, people could argue like, oh, the details a lot better these days. But yeah, because it's computer and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. 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 You're having to do that by eye, and it's yes. like half the size. That, yeah. That's an incredible thing, really. When I, yeah, when I and I mean, uh, my eyes are short now, so when I when I do find detail work, I've got. Goggles mm. and all sorts of things to zoom in, um, but when I made these, I didn't have any problem with my eyes at all. You know, so you know. But like I say, that was thirty years ago. So Bad, yeah. I, I could, if I had to do that again, I would, I would need to use yeah magnifiers. Yeah. I don't sure. think I could do that at my, in my thirties. <laughs> 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 That's true. Cool. Do you think as well, though? Do you think that the one of the things with um, with figures then compared to figures now? Do you think? Not only the fact that the figure's getting bigger, but the fact that, uh, and I mean it in the nicest possible way, I think the standard of painting nowadays is much, much greater than yes. it was, wasn't it? You know, yeah. you know, a friend of mine, he, he can paint to a reasonable standard, and he said he went to the first ever Games Day. He went to the first ever Golden Demon. Oh, he still has uh, yeah. the T-shirt. He's never wore it. He, still, <laughs> he went and he said, um, and I think it was only like a late late teens when he went, mm-hmm. but he, sent, he said, there is people painting now for, you know, the captain of their space marine army that is good he said yes. but he said if you went back to the beginning of the golden demon he said you could have been putting you them in, could, yeah. you could have been putting in yeah. competitions uh, yes and i think size i think the sizes obviously back then when things were that small trying to achieve don't get wrong there's a lot of there's always yeah. been exceptional painters but trying to achieve that level mm. then must have yeah. been so much harder so i was having a, a chat with the andrews about that and there is an element of escalation so when i joined the army painting team like the army painting standard was probably better than the like heavy metal standard like yeah. 10 15 mm-hmm. years prior to that whereas the heavy metal standard is like far higher mm. um and then dave made a really good observation there's this a trend at the moment which is like paint space marines and stuff in classic color schemes so paint them like they were from like the 80s and the yeah yes yeah. and dave's like that's all well and good but those paints never existed if you painted the, the best way to oh. do a classic paint job is get a modern day marine mm-hmm. and paint it with only the materials you would have had in those days. All oh, right, okay. So enamels yeah. and gouache and yes. poster paints and stuff yeah. like that. And then the, how much people? How much people must have been sitting there having to, yeah, having to create their own paint. Well, this is why uh, uh, Dave know, made a really good paint point about John, Sorry. John yeah. Blanche. He, he was saying that John Blanche gets slated a bit, like his paint is a bit messy. But then it was like really of its time because it's like you know high end stuff because he was doing all sorts of mega mad effects using yeah. enamels where everyone was just slapping ba- it was pretty much yeah. base yeah. coating stuff and stuff yeah. like that so that's yeah it's interesting you'd say that that you know, you know paintings come on but I think it's the text kind of helped with that as well yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely for, for right, a certain yeah. degree and I think yeah, but, yeah I think that's always I think a, a, a really fair point is that you nowadays if you look at I'd love to go back and look at you know from the time of Golden Demon, first one, and look how many paints are in the the, the Citadel oh, yeah. compared to how many paints are in the <laughs> Citadel range. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just primary colours. You had to you had to yeah, mix yeah. them all yourself to get what Pretty you wanted. Much, yeah. yeah, I mean, John was great because he um, he wasn't scared to use all sorts of different media. Mm. So he would bring inks, and he would be using inks. Oh yeah, yeah, on on his models, and and the lustrous quality that you got from layering up. You know, I don't know, 10 layers of ink. 
on yeah. a model. It yeah. was just stunning. And we were just like, because we'd been painting gouache and enamels and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff, which was dead flat. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then the, the inks came along and that, that really brought things to life, yeah, you know, yeah. and made them great for, for, for photography because obviously a lot of the studio stuff, that was what it was for, was yeah. to generate an image. You know, and, and John's stuff was brilliant for that, you know. One of my fondest memories of uh, John Blanche actually was, he came over to to, the, to my desk and was like, oh, do you have a pot of white paint? Mm. And it was like, school white would have been the, mm. the paint at the time because obviously they rebranded it. And I have a habit of like mixing in the pot. I know people are going to slate me in oh. the comments for this, but... I can what? already see 20 <laughs> comments oh. already. <laughs> can, we, can we just end this now? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, uh, we wouldn't blame you if you left, Bob. We and really I know, I know it used to like trigger my dad when we used to do hobby paints. He was like, you got red in the white again. I was like, I just like, <laughs> yeah. in the part. And I felt, because I still did it at workshop, and uh, he comes along, he's like, oh, have you got any white? I was like, oh, I've only got this, but I like to mix in the pot. He's like, that's fine. That's exactly how I do it. And he walks away. I was like, oh, oh, oh. justified. Justified. <laughs> well, he, he, used to, he used to use his thumbnail as a little tiny palette. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he yeah. was the other one who taught me that whole thing about bridging your hands when you're painting. Yeah, of yeah, to onto the a, model. Yeah, onto a platform. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know, so that you know you would you would you would bridge your hands yes. so that it was yeah, locked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything was locked. And yeah, you um, got that stability of it. Yeah, yeah, and then you were just making tiny, tiny little movements, and and that was that was great. Yeah, you know, because beforehand you were kind of just coming in like that. <laughs> <laughs> not not so good. Yeah, we were talking before we went live about it because I uh, donated my uh, Realm of Chaos to Bob because yes, he's, oh, he's in it. He's done, he's done stuff in it. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. Uh, lots of his miniatures. I was I literally looking at it the other night and going, yeah. "What if Bob's done any of this?" And you credited it at the front. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Well, quite a few folks are, but you're saying about like the milliput you'd use like your old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because obviously in the studio we would all get copies of these. Yeah, yeah. Got copies of the first forty K book, which I really regret because there was a there was an insert on the front page. You know, this it was like a school prize. You know? <laughs> this book has been presented to, <laughs> and it was signed by Brian. Oh, nice! You know, and all that, and then I trashed it because I used it to make um, Millipot. I don't know if you can see on this in the in this camera, but the model is mostly made of green stuff, mm. but the gun is made out of white Millipot, which was an epoxy two part epoxy putty. And what we would do is I'd roll it up like you would with green stuff, and then I would roll it out onto the nearest book, which would be something like this, <laughs> with a bit of grease on it, and, and some things to, to control the thickness. And then I would, the, the, the sheet would then go hard, and we could then lift it off and start cutting it up and filing it. Problem was, eventually it would stick to the, yeah. the printed cover and we just tear off all uh, oh, off got, yeah. the is it because of the plastic coating is that what yeah made it that's ideal? right that was what made it a good good release yeah okay you know? interesting you know but yeah and it was nice and flat and solid because it was so thick you know yeah it was, it was yeah, pretty yeah. True. yeah they are quite heavy I mean you could probably kill them yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's why I don't have any of these anymore. Ah, oh, well, all just that one. Gone. You can look look at memory lane. Look at we're looking at some yeah. of the art. There's some questionable art in there. And some amazing art. When I say questionable, <laughs> I mean like the the subject matter. I'm like, what are you going to these days? Yeah, I don't think it's very PC. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Not certainly the slanesh side no, of it. That's for no, sure. No, no, no. <laughs> So you got loads of props with you. Um, I yes. love these, by the way. These Marines are so yeah. just seeing them with their little uh, slaughter. Yeah, the little slaughter bases on them. So they never got made. And the little right? dinner for your backpack. Oh, sweet. Yeah, you know it's all it's all there. But uh, yeah, these were never pressed. Um, I think at that point, I think that was late eighties, and at that wow. point, I wasn't really sculpting too much because I was too busy. Helping run plastics yeah, and all yeah. that sort of thing, so I didn't have much sculpting time. Um, that, th those were some of the some of the last figures I made, I think, before I left oh, wow. workshop, um, which was in nineteen ninety. Wow! Yeah, yeah. you know, people yeah. have been born and yeah had babies and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their babies are now playing. Yeah, their today. babies are now playing. You know, <laughs> I mean that's one of the weird things now about because I don't know about you guys, but. You you have an internal mental age, don't you? Oh yeah, you, you, oh yeah. You just lock yourself down. And I'm probably about, I'm about twenty two. Same, same, yeah. Kind of money. Late, you late, know? late teens. So it's 20s. a shock when people come up and say, "I remember, yeah. you know, <laughs> I was just little or I wasn't born." You know, I don't understand that. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's oh, frightening. I'm waiting for someone to come in with a five year old child and go, "When I was your age." 
Jeff was cutting my hair. <laughs> it's gonna be. It's getting dangerously yes, close, Bob. It's, it's, it's getting dangerously yeah, close just, to. You just have to go with it. Really. Yeah, I had a guy you know. cut a guy's hair the other week, and he had a beard the size of mine. He says, um, "He said you did my hair cut for when I was joining secondary school. And he looked like me with his massive beard." And I thought, "Oh God." <laughs> Yeah, the, the, there was people at head office. Kill me now. Here, <laughs> I, here I have cut. Yes. Yeah, there was people at head office that hadn't been born when I started working there. Oh. That were working. I was like, how old are you? I was like, oh, I'm like, you know, 18. I was like, oh, my God. I know. I, know. I was working here two years before you turned, before you yeah. arrived in the world. But, but the thing is that, you know, you're looking at, like you said, the people in the in like heavy metal and the painters, the young guys. Mm. They're just so talented. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? So much, so much talent and, you, and you, yeah. just gets better or worse, I suppose. If you... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's great, you know. So, so we, you know, it's kind of like we're a part of the story. Yeah, you know, But the yeah. story goes on. Yeah, I said stewards know? of our time is, yes. is, is, is a way to look at it. You know. Yeah, just don't don't ruin it, guys. Yeah, don't yeah. ruin it. <laughs> Was that John Civic? I'm just looking at this again. Was that John Civic? I'm not sure. It does say usually in the, the book, um, yeah. back in the day when yeah. they had... Uh, put like who did the front cover yeah, do you remember them heady days yeah, <laughs> yeah it's John Civic yeah, yeah there's loads of Ian Miller in there I um, recently did some stuff magical stuff oh, it's, it's just the amount of art styles that you get I mean you still, kind of still get it now with other like, mm. books because a lot of different artists but um, that very much reminds me of like old workshop because like the Ian Miller style yes. of art and John Blanche style of art is very much of my era yeah. but I guess like when uh, like kids that were quite young when I was working in retail, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be like Paul Dainton and Alex Boyd and yeah. and, and mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. that were, and Mark Gibbons and stuff. Well, with the the covers for like Realm of Chaos, you can still see the remnants of the art style that was coming off all of the original D and D books, can't yeah, you? There's yeah, still very yeah. much yeah. Yes, yes, that. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Aye, aye. Yeah. It's got that kind of like yeah. hero quest. Yeah, yeah. Out yes, yeah. as well. Yeah, and John uh, Sibick was um, what he really loved painting was dinosaurs. Oh, hey, really. But super detailed, yeah, yeah, just like these um, these illustrations, um, and super accurate. He would he went and worked with the Natural History Museum oh. and did a whole series of books. Oh, that's really on, cool. You know, so if if you're down there, and yeah, you, know, yeah. you look up the dinosaur books and you see the familiar finish, that's because it's John Civic. Oh, you know, interesting. And um, yeah, I mean, I did some bits and bobs. In fact, recently I um, uh, let I sent one. My, do you remember the Golden Demon, the original yeah. one that was the paint box? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, yeah, I discovered that in my attic um, about a year ago. I thought, oh, because I thought it was a print. Yeah. And I looked at the back and I thought, oh no, it's the original. And it was so I brought it downstairs from the attic and then I put it online, and um, it's now in the hands of a chap in Singapore. Oh wow. Who wants to uh, do a museum? Oh, okay. In, not in Singapore, strangely, it's going to be in Edinburgh. <laughs> oh, right, okay. So, <laughs> come before six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going there to come back. So that, that'll that be quite interesting. I think he's hoping to start do a, a miniatures museum yeah. there. Um, but that'll be interesting to see what other yeah other pieces come uh, come together, you know, because like you say, there's, there's a lot of these beautiful pieces mm. of artwork out, out there, you know. So I think uh we'll segue on to you for a bit now if that's okay, okay. Oh, yes, fine. um so last time we obviously talked about stuff that you've your, your journey as mm. as bob naismith mm. from workshop up to and we've got a load of questions which i'll get to in a bit from the, from our lovely patrons thank you for sending those in um so obviously john from we print minis contact does he yes does some of your stuff but I'm, you obviously have your own website You've got yeah. a lot, you're quite a... <laughs> yeah, well, just, I, I just wanted to, like, I referred to my website before. Um, I just like to populate people's science fiction world with lots of um, lots of background fluff. You know, the equivalent of the extras who would be walking across the back of shop while the hero's <laughs> doing his thing. Um, so there's loads of those kind of um, models. Um, and of, also... Teams of guys in spacesuits, teams of guys in tech suits, teams of guys that look like they've escaped from the Nostromo. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know, they're just... It's, again, it comes back to this idea of picking up on little threads from existing movies, existing stories, existing cartoons, and, and 
because that's what's in everybody else's head. Well, the you thing know? is, is the background people are sometimes some of the ones that are the interesting ones, aren't they? Because you think the guys in the foreground, you're going to find out who they are, mm. where they're from, what they're about, what what the, their what their hopes and dreams and what they want to yeah. go towards. But the guy in the background walking by. You never know who he is, and you know, and the idea going. Yeah, the, could he be the next hero? You yeah, know? yeah. If you things know. had gone a different way, could it Aye. have been him? Well, was, wasn't it like I can't remember if it was last time we were talking to to you, but we referred to the Star Wars Cloud City, the guy carrying the little. Um, well, the yeah, the guy, the, the the guy in Cloud City at the mm. when when the Empire when Lando tells everyone to evacuate because the Empire is going to take over. Aye. There's a guy running away in the background who's carrying what was a 1980s ice cream maker. Oh, right. Okay. And. <laughs> And now at conventions, people turn up in orange boiler suits, carrying, carrying an ice cream maker. And then the great thing with Star Wars is that they, in the, the TV shows now, the ice cream maker has made a return, and it's just a lockable container. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You but know, people, yeah, well, you know, where the, the steel that make well, Beskar steel, which they make Star, what the Mandalorian armor is made out of. Right. In one scene, it's all being held in an ice cream maker, <laughs> and I love the fact that you know. But I like the idea that yeah. that guy. You know, if that no one has ever picked up on that guy as being who's the guy with the ice cream maker, yeah. no one has probably ever thought, let's put the ice cream maker yeah. back in. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the fans feed the... Yeah, 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 and, I, and, yeah. I, and I love that. I love yeah. the... Because the, some of the most interesting aliens to look at in Star Wars, mm. you, you, you never even know what it. race they are. Yeah, or you, yeah. They have a race and that's about mm. it, and mm. you don't know anything else about them. And I no. think, yeah. And it's about layers, isn't it? You know, because like you say, you've got the main protagonists who you're interested in. You know, but but you know, any film now worth its salt has got some some backstory going on. Um, and there's other characters around. I mean, I'm doing some stuff at the moment from my own website, which is that idea of like the unlikely hero. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the ordinary guy, the insurance salesman, <laughs> you know, who suddenly is thrown into the into the fray, or the kid, or the old lady. Or, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm working through some of those ideas and I, I quite like that idea. Yeah. yeah. You know, so the web, uh, my website is full of files, they're only files. And um, that's where John comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Because John will be able to print them at We Print Miniatures um, for, for anybody, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He's quite yeah. happy to ship. Yeah. The, the cool thing um, I, I really like about John's website is he, it's the, the quality of the prints are really high, aren't they? So yes, they you know, are. they've got good printers. So yeah. one of the things as a, as a hobbyist that I want to paint stuff, when I look at some sites, I'm like, I really want those Star Wars models, but mm. I don't have a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, there's folks like John that uh, will have like a, a website that go, yeah. no, no, we, we have them on our catalogues. We can print them out. eBay does that sometimes. You can mm. get like official people that can print these patreon only stls and stuff like that so so that's always a bonus but yeah if you have a yeah. 3d printer then you yeah. you know you know, yeah. knock your no, socks off yeah my website is is just i don't know I, I think i tried to calculate and there's probably more than a thousand figures wow in, yeah. in there need to troll through all yeah, those yeah there's just <laughs> hundreds of them you know for which i apologize of course but, <laughs> but i'm and the website you know i'm, I'm a sculptor i'm not a website designer yeah. You know, so I, I do my best to make it right. I, I am working on it all the time to make it right. So if anybody out there knows more about that and wants to come and help me, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I'm sure they will. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I think it's great. And it's so much cleaner than, you know, in those days when we were making wee things like this, um, the carpet was full of little crumbs <laughs> of clean stuff. <laughs> That you know would drive my wife up the wall, um, <laughs> drive me up the wall as well. Actually, to be honest, and it, it got everywhere. And and one of the things that impresses me now when you see new green stuff sculpts, and there still are green yeah. stuff sculpts being done, how clean they are. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And it, there's obviously a whole discipline which I never really got um, <laughs> about about keeping your desk clean. You know, partly because when you're filing. Um, a uh, white millipot like this to make a gun you're creating a dust yeah and the dust infests your table and then gets into the green stuff and then you find you've got you know it's like it's kind of like dandruff yeah i suppose yeah <laughs> you yeah. know yeah, I remember seeing Perry's having piles of like green stuff yeah. models that are just like, well, how do you know what's going on? But I guess yeah. they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I guess anyone that's watching that uh, is like, a, maybe they're not doing digital or they are, um, and they they want to get into sculpting, they want to start the mm -hmm. website. Like, 
where did that start for you? Because obviously you, you 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 decided you were going to start making lots of stuff, yeah. and then one day did you just go, you know, no, I'm going to make a website? No, and- no, no. What happened was, I am um, not long after I left workshop and I was freelancing. I was still doing just traditional sculpt, and then one of my customers. Um, Ross Dunaway, mm. who's an American guy, uh, runs a company called Old Glory. Oh, yes. oh yeah, yes. right. Yes. Old Glory, yeah. And uh, so they make all sorts of mainly historical things. And he said he'd been to a convention in the States and he'd been approached by the same people who were supplying this new UK company called Games Workshop oh, okay. with um, digital sculpting stuff. And was I interested? Yeah. And I said, well, okay. And uh, and so they came <laughs> to my little grubby little cottage outside Nottingham. Um, and they were all suits. It was like, <laughs> it was like <laughs> something out of the Matrix. They all turned up and they were very cool. And the girls were all very pretty. And they had this demo set up. Um, the thing was then, the, the, the price of one station of, of the software and the hardware combined was the price of a small car. Uh, yeah. okay. So it yeah. was quite a lot. Yeah. <coughs> so excuse me. Yeah, you're right. So we um I said, that's great, thanks very much. But is is there a is there a cheaper way to do this? <laughs> so they, they kinda got rid of various bits and bobs. And essentially I got it down to I think it was about five thousand pounds. Um so I got my first set of digital software. Uh, okay. Then. Um and then I also bought um uh, my first copy of Z Brush, yeah, which was about version one point zero one or something, and it only cost me about eighty pounds or yeah. something. Oh wow! And of course, it, the the great thing about Pixelogic was that they kept upgrading, yeah, yeah, and upgrading and upgrading. So I just followed it all the way through until recently, you know, where I've I've got like pretty much the latest version, yeah, and it, it's still the eighty quid that I spent. Yeah, yeah. I spent 25 yeah. years ago, yeah. which is fantastic. Thanks very much, Pixelogic. Well, good for getting money um, for getting, re, you know, getting your money's worth. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But of course, what's happened now is that they've moved, they sold out and they moved the model to Maxon, who are uh, people who do that thing, a bit like Microsoft now, where you have to subscribe uh, to your okay, software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to buy yeah. it every year. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I opted out of that. Yeah, so, don't blame you. But yeah, so those are my two main platforms i use blender as well which is free yeah. and very good um considering it's free it's a steep learning curve that's the only thing i'd say about them it's yeah. kind of like going into three different cars where the steering wheel is maybe on the roof <laughs> <laughs> and the other steering wheel is behind you <laughs> and, and, and all the buttons are in different places and each program yeah. is different um and they all essentially do very similar things, but they've all every every one of them's got a trick that it's great at. Yeah, you know. So what you can do is you can you can blend the files, you know, and take a file from one and make it into, you know, like the the freeform sculpt, which is the the one where the beautiful people came to my cottage. Um, they <laughs> where well, they were drinking martini. Where they were drinking yeah. pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, they came out in a balloon. Um, <laughs> there, that's a it's a solid modeling program which means that um with a lot of other programs like like freeform uh, like sorry like zbrush you're you're sculpting with a surface yeah which which is fine and you can do all sorts of tricks with that but once you cut into it um it's, it's a void it's just the space and and it, it has no reality whereas the freeform stuff always has a reality inside the sp- inside the computer so you can cut it in half and it's instantly just two separate pieces. And yeah. that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So you're just mixing the, the qualities of the different programs. Uh, clever. And that's yeah. great. And yeah. I, I, I'm constantly learning, constantly seeing new things and new wee tricks that people are doing. Um, and it's it, it, it can be... You can be invited to go down a road which you don't really need to. You know, um, you can make you could make um, the hairs on on a face individual hairs. There are programs that do that, wow. and you can yeah. style it 
you know, <laughs> do all sorts of amazing things. But primarily, that's for creating an image. Yeah, yeah. I guess, is that like more for like digital sort of like computer gaming and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the stuff looks just so beautiful, but it's just not real. We can't, yeah, you know, we can't okay. make it. Yeah. You know, and you know, if, if I sent a file like that to John, <laughs> ring, he would come down here and just slap me about the face. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Stop that! Unless you print it out really large, like, like yeah, yeah, I, yeah, one yeah. to one, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one to yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you do see things like that on Facebook. Yeah, well, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a guy at, uh, at office who did like a Tau Fi Warrior, and he because he oh, just that was so good. Uh, he, he entered it into Golden Demon, so he, mm. he made his own thing, printed it out, and painted it. And it was really nice. I mm. think it was open competition. He did, mm. um, but I just I wish I could one. Mm, I, I can draw and I can paint. Yeah. I can't sculpt yet. I've never tried it. Um, I can green stuff like berets, which look like ketchup been poured on the head. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the best way to describe my green stuff. Yeah. Ah, you've got to start somewhere. And yeah. The more you do something, you better get, get out for sure. But yeah, having that ability to, to come up with a concept, create it, print it out, and then paint it to mm. like really high levels is is definitely, yeah. you know. I mean, I think there. the whole 3D printing thing is, is is a hobby all by itself. Yeah. You know, people, yeah. people build their own printers now. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, or, I'd love to get or, older one for the, for the yeah, channel so we can have not, a bit of a play. You know that, um, that, that's how fire warrior, have you seen it in the flesh? No, I never saw it in the flesh. Any I was just really desperate to know how big it actually was. Would you say it was about third, thirds of the size if we I if we imagine that. towels have a human size head i don't yeah. know why he, he put a post up because he's been doing a orc uh tom has mm -hmm. um this guy called tom hughes he, he's a sculptor in specialist games studio i think he might move to miniatures now actually think about it as well mm -hmm. steve's my, my buddy steve's mate um and if, i'm sure he did a post on instagram and he's doing this orc and i'm sure the bust is like quite quite a large yeah size mm -hmm. thing but mm -hmm. i could just be my my brain because that's how doing was, that was very, very, very good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so what I was going to ask you is like, you know when you, you, you are doing your digital sculpting, mm -hmm. obviously you do humans, mm -hmm. um, but you also do vehicles. Do you have like different strategies when you're yes. approaching? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, a, I mean, technical because you you know that if you're going to make a vehicle, it's for printing. So you've got to think of it as a kit, more uh, okay. or less yeah. from the from the, from the the start. Um, so you, 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 like if it's a spaceship or a vehicle, you, I think of it as a shell, first of all. Yeah, you know, and so I create the shell, then I cut the shell so that I know that it works as a as a as an object. Yeah, and then go into the detailing and and, and uh, adding all the stuff like that. Exactly. So that's my that's my technique. And again, the solid modelling program is great for that because it's you can do lots of what they call boolean operations, Ooh. which is uh, it's, it's a mathematical. Truth isn't it? Effect A plus B. I can't remember. <laughs> but essentially, what it is is you can take a, one shape and insert it into another shape and uh, extract okay. it. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can then make the uh, the you, you make a hollow spaceship hull. You can then cut the spaceship into two. You can do all sorts of things with these boolean operate boolean operating operations, and that's the core uh, of it of, yeah. of making these things. And then. If you then transport the the file from the solid modeling into something like ZBrush, and start using the the, the tools in ZBrush to um, add textures, add details, um, add pipe work, and all that kind of thing, you, that's what ZBrush is great for. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you can then dump it back into the solid modeling thing, clean it up, make sure it's still a yeah. A, a viable it can still model, fit. yeah, yeah, um, and then then you export that, and then off to the printer it goes. Yeah, you know, so it's it's good. The, um, the only other thing then is making sure that you don't make something that's too huge, because mm. you can cluster so much detail onto these things. Yeah, that most printers will just fall over if you, <laughs> if, you if you start to insert that file. So you have to go through all sorts of reduction processes that will that will make the file viable. Um. Which is just, it's just knitting. It's house, it's housework, you know. Yeah. But it's got to be done. Yeah. You know. Some of that, I remember the sculptors used to have like these processes. I can't remember all of them. And they, they did like uh, a set of drawings with a couple of the sculptors did with like weird, they, they called it the line of draw. So they had a oh, line, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. like the line of draw. Yeah, line of draw. Um, what, what is that? Line of draw is if you're making a hardened steel tool, an injection yeah. molded tool, like Workshop will be using yeah. to make Space Marines. Um, the tool works usually in just a single direction. Yeah. Like okay. Yeah. 
So it's moving. That's actually your line of draw. Yeah, okay. So essentially what it is, is that if you inject soft plastic into a void inside your two blocks of steel, and then you open them up, if there is any undercut... Yeah, any are they the place, bits that will break off? Yes, stuff, yeah. then the steel, being steel, will just be carrying on its own sweet way, and it's the plastic model that will just be yeah. shredded. Yeah. So line of draw is a way of describing that that vector okay and you have to adhere to that because essentially engineering is has is only it either works or it does not work yeah yeah and for line of draw you've got to make sure that the the models are 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 sleek yeah and and the the, the split line that you've established which is where the line of draw ends around the side of the model um you've got to make sure that that is viable and it is um doesn't demand too much of this tool yeah because sometimes if you've got a a model where oh i don't know if the line of draw comes around here and that's the split line and it comes around here and then suddenly you've got a piece of armor where the split line has to jump Okay. Then it's too much. Yeah. You know, so it's it's it is it's, it's where the creativity of the design and the transposing that into an engineering solution. You know, it's funny. I was I went to um, what was it called? Hammer Warhammer Quest or thing? I can't remember what was it called? At New York, the war game oh, show. Hammer, oh, Hammerhead. 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 Yeah, Hammerhead. Yes, yeah I've been you. to that one. Yeah. Yes, and. Um, I don't really see many people uh, that I know. And I bumped into Ali Morrison. Hey! Bless him. <laughs> and I haven't seen Ali for, oh, 15 or 20 years, yeah. really, you know. And he was fine. He was quite happy. And that's one of the one of the things that Ali is brilliant at. Yeah. Is that he can take uh, the designs from the other sculptor, the other digital sculptors, and he's one of the guys who can solve uh, okay, yeah, the yeah, models yeah. and yeah. takes line of draw into effect, ah, uh, yeah. into consideration, Telephone. and all the splitting, and all the laying out, and, you know, when you look at a workshop plastic model now, it's so dynamic, um, but yeah. it's because they've decided that that's the model that it's going to make. It's, we're not trying to pretend that that will be 10 other different figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know? It just makes that figure, and that that is enabling Ali to and or, or other people to cut the model up in just the right way. Yeah. Um, and so line of draw is is it's the engineering um, aspect of of making these things yeah. into, into reality. And it, I guess is that something you don't really need to worry so much about with three D printing, or is that still no? Into I effect? mean, and some of the the like the solid modeling software that we have now. They've got um, things that will solve that for you. So uh, okay. it, do, it does a lot of the the donkey work, you know. But every now and then, because it's a computer, it does something <laughs> stupid, and you have to go in and say no, 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 <laughs> and, and, and fix that yourself. Yeah. But generally speaking, it is pretty good at doing so. Mm. That. Other programs have got other, um, perhaps less um, sophisticated ways of solving it. But yeah, okay. but they do they do have them. Um, yeah. But it's it, if you're making injection molded stuff. Um, you have to, because as I say, it's engineering. The the steel tool doesn't care whether it's making a space marine or a plug, or a cup. It's it's just an absolute. Yeah. You know. So that's that's really why. My mate Steve that. was like making scenery for uh, workshop, and then he'd have like this sort of like beige sort of map, net map thing of like yes. the scenery he's making and then yeah. every now and again there's like a little bit of pink that he's got to like yeah he's got to tidy that yeah, yeah and that's where line of draw yeah that's really we'll really, no, no, really clever that, that does that yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah that'll break off or ruin the model or whatever <laughs> <laughs> so that's always clever yeah but it's it's uh, that's why you know could, do you mind if I oh yeah that was just a test know, yeah this 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 one here is a perfect example really of how good the workshop system is now you know the, the the faces here, the faces, yeah, yeah. are all presented to the tool so very well. The the helmets, the detailing on the the shoulder pads, it's all been designed now so that it maximises the detail a across the the design yeah. face of the tool, and minimises the disturbance around the edge. 
you know, because they're so chuck a block these days as well. Because I, I got an old sprue, I, I think it was, yeah, uh, oh, it must have been Cadians or something like that. It was a, a, an older, yes. uh, Imperial Guard sprue, and it was like barren. Hi, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, now there's yeah. not a centimeter it, lost yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's right, yeah. that's right, and that's because it's it's because it's now internal. Um, in the old days when we were um, designing sprues, um, we were using. We were outsourcing the pattern work, which was the the making of the three uh, yes, pattern, yeah, yeah. and we were outsourcing the tooling, which would be taking the pattern and making it into the steel mold. Um, and both of those were really very expensive. They were part of the automotive industry and were very expensive oh, um, wow. operations, which is why a lot of the frames were pretty bare because yeah, yeah. we only put in what we could afford yeah, you know? yeah. that's whereas, crazy yeah whereas now with digital you know the machines will be a little bit slower cutting an extra sword but not that much slower yeah you know and they can they can still do it you know the machines will work 24 hours a day yeah i don't know if they still do it i remember we used to have meetings where there would be like there was a kit being made and stuff and you'd mm. get like an engineer come in and mm. you'd have like a little fold out of like all the different because you have like small sprue character sprue medium sprue tank yes. sprue and they have like this layout and they'll be like, draw, like, I guess silhouettes mm -hmm. of all the parts. Yes. They'll be like, yeah, this bit's been circled because that's that's not going to fit on now. We need to like change that and yeah. remove this and stuff. And I always used to find that fascinating, where you got like an engineer who's been doing all this work mm -hmm. comes into the meeting with like this fold out printout of like the sprue and just yeah. going, there, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. Well, that's that's partly because where you've got the the sculptors, the people that are at my end, the, you've maybe got a couple of couple of platforms a couple of software programs you're using to make the figures but the engineers they've got another two or three sets of software that do all the solving yeah that yeah. will then take these models that have been cut up and then they'll start to lay them out in a a proper manner you know yeah. that, that will fit the the frame you know because at the end of the day the plastic is injected in this in the case of this sprue it's been injected here. And uh, here. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so this liquid plastic is squeezed in and has to find its way through all the sprues, through all the little sub gates to fill all the little cavities that will make legs and torsos and arms and weapons and heads. And, and it, it's got to be done in, in such a manner that it's like icing. You know, when that, mol when that molten plastic goes in, it's funneling through all of these little things like like filling a tree <laughs> and if if it's designed so that two pieces of plastic will enter like say here you've got this this arm and there's two feeds there yep two feeds one, here, yeah. one there so if the plastic's coming in to fill that void from two directions and when it hits it it sticks together yeah but it only sticks together a wee bit uh, okay. So if the if that that model then when you cut it off, uh, it it might just part. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why things like not so much with with um forty k because there aren't many spear shafts, but on on Warhammer Fantasy or yeah. whatever, whatever it's called now, um, this this the spear shafts have always been a problem because yeah. they had to squeeze the plastic in all the so, way. I, I don't know if you could illuminate this. I always just find it fascinating. I don't know if it was like a, a, a design intention or just like a mutation of the process. But Urukai spear spikes for Lord of the Rings, they, they, had, they were quite long. They mm -hmm. had a habit of breaking. But what they would do was have a male and a female fit in so you could re-glue it together. Oh, right, yes. Which was really weird. Aye. And it was really handy yeah. as a hobbyist because it was like you'd have like this little thing picking out and you'd just go, oh, just glue it back in again. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, like, that was one way to solve it. I yeah. Think, you know. But um, that's just mad. It's almost like, like the plastic's got its own mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, it does, you know. And, it, and it's just such a... When you, when you break it down, it's a... Just such a practical thing. Yeah. Molten plastic squeezed into a steel mold. And it doesn't care what it what it's making. Yeah. You know. Um not so much to do with this, but I've made models for people who wanted to make English Civil War pikemen. Oh yeah. Now if they're modelling an eighteen foot or a twelve foot pike for the toolmaker, that's just like a nightmare. Yeah. Because how does he you know, yeah. fill that that spear so that when it's on the war games table, it doesn't go ping. 
yeah, yeah. and just snap off and ruin See, a model. I love a like, lot of the old war game stuff where it's just like you bought those metal separately. Yes, the steel yeah. ones. Because they have the hands cupped. Yes. And you just slide it in. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, a lot of like Lord of Rings figures that would break and I'd replace them with these like mm -hmm. brass uh, yeah. pikes. But then you'd forget how sharp they are. So when you lean down to grab like yeah. a model, <laughs> get one stuck on your cheek. Like, <laughs> <laughs> stabbed by my own Gondorian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure there are still people who are doing, making do those... Things like they are, they're, they're like little nails or dressmakers' pins, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, um, dangerous things. <laughs> but yeah, I think for 40k, they've managed again because it's sci fi, they can design around that and they, yeah, they, they have yeah. done that so well. You know, it's 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 a remarkable, remarkable thing. Have you found like doing like the digital stuff is like change and it sounds really weird but change the way you approach sculptor is it just like still because i know like from a technical point of view there's lots of different things but from a, like a designing kind of side of it it's like you still yeah it's the s s same fundamentals or like oh no i have to be pretty, completely... pretty much the same fundamentals i mean one of the great things about digital stuff is that you amass um a, a huge archive of stuff you've done before that you can bring out and it's just as fresh as it was yeah you know um so weaponry basic figures, you know, so you can, you know, I, I've got several torsos and bodies that I can just start from, you know, so I don't have to, yeah. you know, sculpt them, I just bring yeah, them yeah, in yeah. and I can tweak them a little bit and then I can put put clothes on them or put armour on them and I can bring in some armour, bring in some helmets, bring in some packs, bring in some harnesses, bring in some boots yeah. and bring them all together and... and then it all fits, yeah. you know, and that's that's great. It's a bit like Lego at yeah. that point. Yeah, because we were know? saying on the last year, you had like loads of like assets, such yeah, as like whole yeah. holsters and yeah, and you just and bring stuff. them together, and um, you know, you just build a kind of essentially like a T shape pose, you know, yeah, a man standing there with his arms out, and you can you can clad that in any way you you wish, and then once you're happy with it, then you can start animating it, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, so that yeah, so that it has affected the way that figures are designed. I think um, it means then if you're wanting to create a new one, you've really just got to go back to your sketchbook and, yeah, and yeah. start sketching again and drawing because that's the only way you'll discover new, new designs, new solutions. I think you know, or and looking on the internet at lots of other things. You know, um, you know, it's a fantastic resource. You know, for, yeah. for anything really. But so, I mean, I was going to ask. I mean, it's going to be. One, I'm going to jump on some Patreon questions in a minute. I'm assuming you've probably got some questions as well. <laughs> yeah. Are we doing for time, by the way? We're probably probably could do with uh, getting onto the questions. Yeah. Then, cool. So, yeah. well, well, oh, right. well I, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for the Patreon's benefit instead of my own benefit. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there, there are a whole bunch, and some of them were like things I was going to ask, but I'm, I'm going to get them to ask it. So. Obviously, people are happy to, to hear that you're back on. Uh, are, so we've got uh, Possum Man. Hello, Possum Man. Uh, are there any good books or resources that Bob can recommend for beginners getting into designing sculpting miniatures? Okay. Oh, designing sculpting miniatures. Uh, I would say there are, there, are, there are several. There are some I've noticed on Facebook that are, um, and forgive me, I don't know their titles. Uh, I didn't go any further because I looked and thought, a hundred dollars. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think you need to do that. I think you need to get a good grounding in in anatomy. Yes. And yeah. proportions, and you've really got to start with that. Yeah. There are many, many good books and online resources for for anatomy. Lots of ways that you can study that. Um, the way then that things like cloth folds. Yes. Yeah. There are books on dynamic dynamic folds. There's oh. one book, uh, <laughs> and then there's the also who knew it get that precisely? Yeah, you know, dynamic, uh, dy dynamic anatomy, yeah. which is like superhero poses and how to bring dynamism into your models. Um, that kind of comes digitally now. That comes later after you've solved making the design of the model. Um, uh, looking at and really looking at. Uh, models that you admire, yeah, um, and and analysing them and figuring out, well, how would I have made this model? You know, what what techniques would I have used? You know, the the the, the way that folds now on this this cloak is now fashioned. Uh, you know, there are lots of digital tricks to create these yeah, now, yeah. Um, and it's a 
it's a great, wonderful technique. Um, the, the, this, the layering of detail on models is also important because essentially, at the end of the day, you're going to make something which is 30, 32, 34 millimetres tall. It's not very big. And if you're going to paint it, you've got to make sure that it lends itself to being painted. You could make what you might call a, muse a museum scale model yeah. where the, the thickness of the harness was the scale thickness of the harness, which is uh, tiny. Okay, yeah, tiny. I see what you mean, yeah. And, and you would then need to have real expert painting, very, very fine scale painting. So you need to be able to establish a layering effect, you know, so make sure that when you're using armour, it's got a bit of thickness to yeah. it. Um, make sure that, you know, all your strap work, all your rivets, even if, if you've got a rivet, if, if you're doing a digital thing like ZBrush, there are several tools. Alphas is, is their term for a three-dimensional um, height map that you use to stamp um, an, ob uh, an object with a texture or a, or a shape, like a rivet or nuts and bolts, anything like that. You can create your own. Um, but one of the good things about that would be to create... Say you had a rivet on your chest. Yeah. If there was a little gully around the edge of the rivet that goes in. Yeah. Now, that doesn't really exist, but it helps define that edge, yeah. and it's great for painting. Yeah, I suppose... So when you're putting yeah. a wash it's on... It's an artistic licence, isn't it? You do things sometimes from a... a like, when I'm painting, I mm. do things because it looks better from a distance yes. or, or whatever. So that makes a lot of sense, Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. So what you're trying to do is help the, um, help the painter when he's finally got the model in his hands and he's yeah. trying to paint it. Make it easy. Yeah. Make it easy to paint, you know. You reminded me, there was um, when they did the dwarf iron breakers or the dwarf, I think it was the iron breakers, they had all this knot work sculpted on the armour panels. Mm -hmm. One undercoat's gone. Yeah. The DL yeah. just takes it. It's, it's like, because it's so shallow. You, yeah, there's and nothing, I remember yeah. every metal having to have freehand it in. Yeah. Uh, for the box cover. It was just like, oh, it's like the, yeah, what, yeah, what so the that's, that's, so we've got Rupert Millwood with him, who's going to... Uh, someone, someone asks this every time, which is how much wood, yeah. wood, could a wood chuck chuck, but I'm not going to get you to answer that, because they just do it. <laughs> it's become a thing <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, what were the sources of inspiration for Space Marines, and did you ever think the Marine you designed all those years ago would become so iconic with such a depth of lore to it? Right, OK, so... So sources of uh, inspiration. Right, OK, so I suppose um, Rick, who worked on Warhammer 40,000, had his own verbal description. Um, we talked about things like uh, the description of um, space troopers mm. in Starship Troopers. Yes, yeah. Uh, and Highline's book. Um, not the movie, because yeah, that's yeah, nothing I, like it. Yeah, but, yeah. but it wasn't but the around them, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah. It, it, was a, it, was a, it was another beast entirely. So there was that. There was also the idea that these were men who were basically uh, augmented and who were supermen, in a sense, um, locked into their armour. Um, originally, we had it designed so that, in our minds, it was the same as in Starship Troopers. So if you took an injury, yeah, the suit would automatically... You know, if your foot was damaged beyond repair, it would just automatically just amputate your foot. You <laughs> oh, know? wow. Um, and so in our minds, that was the kind of suit that, yeah, these, yeah. that these guys were wearing. So there was that. There was also the Terrifying. fact that they were um, uh, they were infantry. Yeah. Assault infantry. So they had to be able to move. They, they had to be able to obviously hold their weapons and we took a, well I personally took a lot of um, information from Second World War and yeah. First World War landings assaults um, you know what an American infantryman would wear what a British infantryman would wear what the webbing yeah, yeah. you know was like so those were the, the sort of sources that, that we were, were looking at you know when we were designing the the bolt gun <sighs> was really a kind of, like, it's a cross between an Uzi and a Bren gun <laughs> and a Sten. You know, and there's, 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 you can see if you if you strip it back to its yeah. basics that that's really... Because we had to make it believable. Yeah. You know, and, and something that you can in, in, invest yourself in. So those are the kinds of things. The backpack, I'm looking at the Space Marine backpack now, was 
was a kind of sci-fi reiteration of uh, a, a, a standard infantryman's backpack yeah. from the Second World War, like with a blanket roll yeah, on yeah. it and packs yeah, yeah. all clustered around it, you know. And so that's really what the, what the backpack started off as, ah, okay, yeah. you know. Um, so those those are the the main design sources, yeah. you know. There was a, um, oh, about 10 or 15 years ago, there was a, a case that went to court where the Games Workshop... Oh, is that the chapter house thing? The chapter yeah, house yeah, yeah. thing. And they, they, so they sent these American lawyers over here. Yeah. And, and I went in and I did a presentation to them and answered some questions. Um, and those were the, the sort of things that came up. Where did it come from? Yeah. Do you know, and I, that's what I said, you know. So all you can do is tell the truth, yeah. you know, yeah, when yeah, you're there. Yeah. And, and that was it. And I, I think, I can't remember, I think it was... It was a split decision, you yeah. know, at the end of it. You know, I think some of some of the things went workshops way and some of the things didn't. Um, but, you know, it does seem the case that the internet is populated by a lot of stuff which isn't strictly from Games Workshop, but yeah. is is used and usable. Well, know. we said before we went on the show that, you know, there's so much stuff nowadays you can look at. There's some inspiration somewhere from something else. Yeah. It's very hard to, to yes. make something from scratch. Yeah, uh, and I, th I think that's why why probably the workshop thing is more to do now about iconography. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's really where they're... Because you can present that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you can't uh, reinvent a greave or a van brace or a shoulder pad. No, that's but right. You, you know, I mean, you can change the design of it, but you can't... No, you can't. It's still a van brace, it's still a shoulder pad. Absolutely right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, it also, um, uh, part of that was like, how, um, and do you ever think the marine you designed all those years ago would become so iconic uh, with all, with such depth of law to it? Mm, I, I, just after I made them, um, I, I still remember um, Brian and, and Alan Merritt come up and say, congratulations for making this thing. I went, okay, but it's kind of... No, I think the answer yeah, at, yeah. at the outset was no. It was just it was another set of figures. At that point, most of the sculptors were involved in making fantasy models. Yeah. yeah. And sci-fi was something which was... They didn't really want to get too heavily into that. Which is mad because it became the most popular of exactly. the two things. That's right. <laughs> you know, so Boys here we are. Um, but yeah, at, at the outset, sci-fi was like the pure relation. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it's the opposite uh, way now. Tables, Fantasy tables is have like... turned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess that goes with the trends as well. But, yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. and it'll probably come round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If that D and D movie does well. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so James Sheargold asks, "What three miniatures are your favourite that you designed over the years?" Oh, blimey! If you could pick three, and that could be at any point. <sighs> The thing is, I've, I've made so many. <laughs> I know, Dave said that. Um, <laughs> Only in just the last year, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know John stresses, it's like working through your catalogue. There was... Hmm, Probably not stresses. I, do you know what? <laughs> I'm not sure I could come up with three. One. <laughs> One? <laughs> they made it better or worse. <laughs> Some of them um, are, are, are digital. Mm. Um, and some of them are not not that old now, and I look at them and yeah, that's blooming good that. And it's not, sorry about this, it's not science fiction, and it's, it's not fantasy. Oh, it was World War Two. Oh, oh right, okay. Nice. And it was a World War Two RAF fighter pilot. Oh, nice. And I was really chuffed with that because I I, I took you know like went into what all the harnesses were and. What kind of helmet was it? A Type B or a Type D? You know, and the goggles were they? You know what? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and but the great thing about the digital thing is you can drill down and you can make you say, "I'm today. I'm going to make those goggles," and you you've got all the reference and you just concentrate on making the goggles. You don't have to fuss with the rest of the model. Yeah. And then you can save that off and then bring it in, and it looks great. And yeah. That was one of the things that I liked, and then. The other thing about it is because you can then pose it, you know, so you, uh, you bring okay. life to this, this, you know, stick man. Yeah. Um, and you, you can, you know, do that. And then the other thing I really quite like doing now, and it's a bit of a cheat, is um, especially for these um, pilots, uh, is that we 
people will ask for, a, for their face to be inserted. Now, I can copy a face if I get enough photograph mm -hmm. reference, but also we can digitally scan it. Yeah. Okay. So what we do is we just scan the person's face and just drop it in. And sometimes you look at it, that's just brilliant. And they're <laughs> really chuffed with that. You know, yeah. it's a great solution. So some of those models I'm, I've been really pleased with, uh, I've, I've made other weird ones. Um, I made... A BMW 805RW engine. <laughs> <laughs> which is, that wasn't the answer I was expecting. Which, is, <laughs> which was the engine that was used for the ME109. Oh, oh nice. yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, it was a complete pain in the yeah, I bet. back end to make this thing because it's, <laughs> yeah. it's all pipes and, and convoluted exhaust systems and fuel injection systems. Um, it was a rotary engine, of course. Uh and it was just a, it was a, excuse me, it was a swine to make. Um, but swine's at the end of the day, it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good model. It was a good model. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's loads of things. There's. Uh, Is there a range you would say that you're really proud of? Like, because you do like sci-fi stuff. My own well. stuff, I'm really pleased yeah. with because it's allowed me to make st make my own thing. There's one that I've still not released, which is. Uh, called the Dante's Revenge, and it's a spaceship, Ooh. and it's but it's big, and it, it's it's one of these things. I'm I'm always conscious when I'm making things like this for people to buy. If you've got a standard digital printer, so the printer plate's about it's about A five yeah size. If you put more like individual figures on there, you can and you do it right. You'll maybe get you could get fifteen or twenty yeah. on there. And print them off, and that means that in you know a couple of hours you can have fifteen or twenty figures. That's pretty good, yeah. Great, um, and it's not you don't use that much resin. But if you're going to make a spaceship that's this big, uh, okay, you've got to cycle through maybe maybe ten, maybe twenty prints print cycles um, before you've got all the parts to, yeah. to make this thing. Which at the end of the day, you just put it on the table, and then you move all the B men around it because. Yeah. You know, yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a quandary because I, I feel like I'm indulging myself <laughs> when I make this spaceship. You know, and I, it's, it, it's great because it's got all sorts of interior details and there's, it's like a film set. Yeah, you know, you could go into it and wander about it oh, and everything. Good, yeah, it's it's really nice, but. It's, would people ever print it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Links yeah. in the description yeah, to Bob's yeah. website. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was going to mention about uh, like engines and stuff. I remember I wanted, I was collecting Soviets for World War Two, and I wanted a T-34, just a simple T-34. Mm -hmm. Tamiya was quite expensive because I went to Derby War Game Show. And there was another company, I can't remember the name of it, and it was like a tenner. And I was like, I'm going to get that. You had to build the entire engine before you can build the rest of the tank around oh, it. Wow. I know, I was like... I'll give up. <laughs> Dave, do you want a T-35? I yeah. thought I might give it to Ray, actually, instead of Dave. But yeah, like, I never got around to it because oh. it just put me off. Uh, right, we have uh, Gunwich. He's asking. Uh, congrats for coming back. Uh, welcome. Uh, question, what is your fondest memory of working at GW back in today? Oh, right. Lots, lots of good ones. Um, because we, we, we sat in, at one point, we didn't have our own space, the sculptors. So we were sitting upstairs in the studio mm. with where John was working and Charlie Elliott and all these people. And so there was a role. Um, we, we typically worked then at jewellers' benches, which have got like a half moon uh, oh, yeah, out yeah, of yeah, them. Oh, them, yeah. Um, and, and, and there was a whole, the, we'd had a row of those built. And there was me, Jez, Ali, Trish, um... Nick Bibby wouldn't come in very often because he was allergic to this white millipot. Oh, really? Still is, I think. Oh, man. Um, so he couldn't come near that. He could only just about cope with green stuff. Um, but he made beautiful models. Must be a nightmare being a sculptor, not being able to. I know. <laughs> no, I mean, but Nick made some fantastic stuff. Um, um, and then the twins would come in every now and then um, because they like working at home. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we moved downstairs. And so there was a there was a kind of party yeah. atmosphere. It was yeah. really good, you know. Um, and when we moved downstairs, in a way that kind of got even better because we could we were always chewing the fat, and you know yeah, you would yeah. say, "Oh, what do you think about this, Ali? Or what do you think about this, Jez?" And, and seeing how different people worked, yeah, you know, because Jez was always very planned and organised, and always had drawings. 
and and people like me and Ali who'd come from like historical wargaming would just like start would just yeah, start yeah, yeah, yeah. get on with it <laughs> um, you know uh, so it was just different different ways of working and that was that was really fascinating seeing people like that working together yeah and we, we rubbed along pretty well yeah you know yeah. then Kevin came and he 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 didn't like being with everybody else, so he, we had this little room where Kevin sat and he made all his goblin stuff. Where's Kevin's at, sorry? Kevin Adams. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. 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 Um, and, and he just made all his goblin stuff in there. Yeah, um, I, I suppose when I look back at my times in the studio, you'd have like some that like really sociable and others that just like cut headphones on. Yeah. In a corner, you're like, cool. I do remember because I'm fond of singing. <laughs> and I used to sing all I get some time. tunes <laughs> and um, Jez bless him was sitting next to me and eventually he just said could you please stop singing and I said okay okay but I couldn't stop and I just kept going it was like a nervous twitch and it, yeah, yeah and, it, and I can't he didn't get violent but at one point he was, <laughs> he, was he was saying I will not be able to carry on working here if you don't <laughs> stop so I had to stop so uh, yeah you know and that was a shame yeah so I don't know whether maybe headphones was the answer but <laughs> in those days it was like Sony for Rockman. everyone else yeah everyone you. else yeah <laughs> yeah I, I used to we were lucky we had a in the army painting team we used to have a little room and mm. it had a sink in it and we could close the door we didn't like closing the door because it was mm. always closed door it was made a barrier people yeah, didn't want to yeah. come in and mm. interrupt you but it was just there because we used to have power ballad Fridays oh, right. so just to stick every power ballad on we <laughs> had uh, like country and west Western Fridays, or my favourite was the National Anthem, and it's surprising how many National Anthems are the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah, that, like, lyrics, the, yeah. the UK National Anthem is like used like yeah. at least 50 more countries. <laughs> it's yeah. mad. Uh, but no, it's cool. It's like, it, nice. it seems like that that, that continued, though, those, those kind of like camaraderie yeah, sort of groups for a long, thing. long time. I, in fact, one of the things about becoming a freelance, the, 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 the sadness of it was that solitary thing. Yeah. You know, that you were suddenly all by yourself. Yeah, you know, and that was, you know, I did miss that. Still yeah. do, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, that you know, there's just a group of three of us now, as opposed mm. to an office of like twenty or whatever. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So we got uh, Jamie Harold, uh, and he's like, as a fellow Scot, I'd like to know if uh, if he thinks the early massive input from himself and the likes of Ali Morrison are truly appreciated within the wider GW canon for everything being England, Notting- Nottinghamshire derived. Well, I mean, I uh, also, there's someone in my village with the number plate 40k, and I've always wondered if that's some rich GW boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it probably it's got to be, hasn't it? I don't know any staff of that, that other than like the higher management. Yeah, the 40k. Or a number plate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. I never really. Um, I wasn't conscious of any kind of England, Scotland. Barriers, kind barrier of thing. Yeah. thing going on. It was more a case of can you do the job, you know? Because yeah, David, yeah. David Gallagher was there doing doing his artwork. Of course, yeah. You know, he got um, Trish as well. Yeah, yeah, Trish. I think nationalism is quite a low thing amongst creatives, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. you don't. You yeah. don't really. It didn't. It didn't trigger. I, I mean, I suppose maybe if like uh, you were doing the Jacobite wars and the English were forced to make the English and the Scots were forced to make <laughs> yeah, the Scots well, yeah, yeah. then you might well, get a bit so the, the Scots did a lot of damage though <laughs> <laughs> but they um, did <laughs> but no I mean it, it wasn't I mean there was only one I remember um, Richard Halliwell wrote a scenario for Warhammer Fantasy which was called it was based on Macbeth and it was called Macdeath <laughs> <laughs> and, good, yeah. and but it, it was all it was dropped on us at one it, very short notice and and Brian said we need some figures we need some figures and I said well I could make some men in kilts so we I made in in one day and this I mean I don't know how long it takes people to sculpt figures now in one day I think I made eight islanders in kilts wow, you know in with a day. some with cabers and some with swords and and they were the kind of the infantry and they'd be that scared and they were well. all this kind yeah of stuff. mad um, <laughs> And I was quite exhausted at the end of it, but, I bet. but yeah. it was it. I was the obvious man to come to, you yeah. know, because I was a Scot. So I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you obviously I know it all inside. Just yeah. get your word yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Freedom. It, no, it worked, it worked. <laughs> Did they let you out for breaks or anything at that point? <laughs> mm, no, no, yeah. no. We were, we, that was Enfield Chambers, which is um, on low pavement. In the oh yeah, of yeah, the town. yeah, yeah. It's now Paul Smith, I think, or something. Yeah. Like that. 
Uh, yeah, like, I know exactly where you building. mean. Yeah, it's gorgeous built. Mm. Yeah. So I have an ego branding saying, what was the last thing you sculpted for GW? If you can remember that far back. <sighs> oh, gosh. It may, have been, it may have been these. Oh, you did say, actually, in the, yeah, in the show that, that, that might be the last things you did. Um, yeah, my, my, my job function for l the last couple of years before I left was really um, management and admin, mm. you know, um, which was fine. But yeah. I, I always found as a creative person, it was so hard. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> you know, so hard because you, you didn't know whether you'd done a good job or a bad job. Yeah, yeah. In any given day. Well, management, know? it's always like every, when, when things go well, you, you praise the staff. When things go bad, it's on you. Yeah, that's so right. You, you just, and, and your peers hate you because if you're doing well, they're like, How, yeah. how's your team yeah. doing so well? Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the whole thing about management was what you really wanted was the job being done. Yeah. But you're... But the people under you really didn't want to talk about that. They wanted to talk about how cold it was or, <laughs> yeah. or could they get off early to go and pick up the kids or yeah, something. Yeah, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't about the job, you know. Anyway. Uh, well, we talked about uh, Big Blue Luke asks your Space Marine inspiration. We've already kind mm -hmm. of discussed that. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, are there any 40, so this is from Rusted Bolton. Uh, are there any 40K minis that Bob looks at and wishes he designed? Oh. The person I've always really admired is Jez. Because mm. Jez is the kind of... He's the person who, in my view, took the aesthetic... Yeah, yeah. ...by leaps and bounds ahead, you know. And, and I think only he could have done it, because I couldn't have done it. Yeah. So, he creates the sort of template, really, did need to yeah. some degree for Marines, and I think... Yeah, I think so. He's the, he's the one that put all the effort into refining and refining... The design into kind of what it's yeah, yeah. what it's become now. So I, I think probably the the figures that Jez made the Eldar, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, some of those Eldar, the Scorpions, and the, the just the way he'd taken the taken the ideas and just ran with them. Mm. Uh, I I always admired. Those well, things. even like his um, sketches for his uh, Mechanica stuff, um, mm -hmm. that was like donkey's years old. But that was what they drew yeah, inspiration they from, weren't they? Yeah. Even like the weird Birdman, yeah, and the helicopter and stuff yes. like that. I was just yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, when you, yeah. yeah. Well, remember they he drew that um, gun platform Necron, didn't he? The Destroyer, years before, and then when they made it, it mm -hmm. never looked quite as, as, as cool as, as his drawing. drawing. And then they went back and made the made it again when they relaunched the Necrons uh, last edition oh, cool, and it yeah. looked like the original art and it was really cool to yeah. see that it, it had finally been vindicated you yes. know yes yeah 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 and again it was down to Jesse's method you know that he, he always drew stuff you know and from from the workshop IP point of view that's great yeah you know how are we doing for time Jeff does it we've got uh, well we've got 30% left oh that's fine we'll be fine for, uh, yeah, for a few more questions here. and yeah. we'll, we'll uh, okay, show the giveaway stuff oh, okay. so done Chris, about an hour and 25 minutes oh that's fine uh, so Chris or just Chris is called um, we're seeing uh, so seeing how uh, GW are doing more made to order to uh, um, made to order runs of classic miniatures and even returning some of the old fantasy range from the old world because mm. uh, that's you know the old world's been been revamped and stuff uh what miniature uh that bob has sculpted would he like to see come back as a limited run i, I imagine probably the first marine maybe but well the first marine they brought they did they did do the first marine a little they while did ago the didn't they? yeah the first they re, marine's they been redesigned it didn't they oh they did the plastic dude didn't they? is that the one you're on about or do you mean like a they did one that was in that original pose yeah. didn't they but uh, it was yeah, like exactly. a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah yeah and that was that was because the very the, the first one was done before we had the weapons yeah. Sorted. So he's just got this kind of amorphous tubey with a really thing. massive big yeah. bayonet on it, as I remember. Yeah, right yeah. So it was the, the design again. That that's the sort of that's where Jesse's strength came in because he he tied it all down. Yeah. You know, and made sense of it. Yeah. You know, um, gave it a uniformity. Yeah, like when we made the plastic space marines, it was really Jez who designed the. Um, the missile launcher. Yes, yeah, that thing. You know, the over-the-shoulder bazooka yeah. thing. You know, um, and he thought it all through. Um, you know, so those were the those were the elements which which gave it made it real. Brought yeah. it together. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Uh, Tyfield uh, or Tyfeld, sorry, um, says, "Were you aiming at?" to make a unique silhouette or shape back then because uh, nowadays everything feels like it's got designed to have its own silhouette or shape like 
a, a Drezar, who's a Jakari character, has, looks like an X or Angron, like hunched over. Yes. Uh, doesn't look like the other Primarchs have their own silhouette. I, I assume that's probably it. It is. It's pretty much like that. I mean, again, I'm conscious of the use of the model on the table uh, and have it describe what it's supposed to be doing. So if it's an assault marine or an assault figure, it's got to be in an advancing. Yeah. attacking pose you know yeah. it's nice to have a cool guy just standing yeah, there yeah, yeah. and then for painting but really on the table that's what you yeah, want yeah you want and shooters yeah yeah and likewise as you say if you've got some kind of completely feral beast thing you need to have that that pose yeah so yeah. you can just look at the figure and you don't even have to look at the detail you can tell yeah what it is and it's going to rip you to pieces yeah <laughs> yeah basically I'm gonna die uh, James Tarrant has asked uh, have you ever hidden little details in your scopes a little inside joke or telltale identifier to show people Bob, Bob was here <laughs> um, with plastics that was very difficult yeah. because you know it has to go through several other hands um, when we were doing um, green stuff models we might have done the odd thing you know yeah. like put, a, put someone's face in yeah. you know <laughs> Um, or, or our version of their face because we were only just sculpting. Um, you know. Wasn't well, that like the the, uh, the sculptors for the terracotta uh, the terracotta army? Didn't they just used to sculpt their uh, mate? Yeah, yeah. They, they were stood next to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so there were yeah, so yeah, many in the work, and they just did. They go. Yeah, look at look at me, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Actually. Yeah. I remember yeah. Um, Dave Andrews used to like some of his scenery kits, and when we used to do big conversions, always used to put milk bottle. <laughs> <laughs> on everything. I didn't know it was like it, there was uh, the Empire State Troops had like a wine bottle, and on one of the uh, uh, it was like a tower that had like a or, um, orrery on the side. Oh, but he put like one of those on the doorstep, and then a lot of like there was a massive, great big entrance to a hive, and he put like two or three and did like gold tops. <laughs> uh, That's brilliant. It's just like little milkman. I don't know how many did that too, but that used to be wow. Like, in, in no, I, I no, I just I, <laughs> I always make so my laugh. my position if you like in the in the team of sculptors was i was the person who was the quick the quick iterator you know I, if they needed something quick they'd come to me yeah you know um when there was a time when brian was negotiating with lucasfilm to do star wars oh uh, cool and so they had some people over from star wars to talk and brian said oh you know i could have a model on this table tomorrow and they said yeah okay then <laughs> so they came to me and said, can you make a Star Wars Stormtrooper model and we'll press it. You know, you make it tonight. We'll press it in the morning. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Good um, luck. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you, you, we'll press it in the morning, cast it, and then we'll give it to one of the painters to, in, so that it was a model. Yeah. Just so that Brian could show that we were capable of doing these things. Um, so I did that. But it fell through, I think, because... Um, the Lucasfilm people wanted the uh, the model to look just like the movie, i.e., uh, yeah. like museum type. Yeah, you know, yeah. so very slight figure. Yeah. you know, and so the model that we made, I'd I'd been told to give some some attention yeah. to that, but not to go all the way. Yeah. But they looked at it, and said, "No, we can't." We don't want to do that. See, I find that fascinating because when we were doing Lord of the Rings, mm. it was um, when the Hobbit was kicking off, and we were painting some of the stuff for the Hobbit, so like the uh, the company of adventurers, so like Dwarlings and like Thorin and all that. Mm -hmm. And you have to every time, even if, when you're an army painter, you'd have to get them photographed, and then they'd be sent to uh, New Line Warner Brothers to be signed off. And sometimes like that, that magenta is not quite the right tone of magenta. And I was doing yeah, that some yeah. scenery because we had like some um, footage of uh, Fang, not Fangorn, uh, Mirkwood, uh -huh. but it was pre-edited. So it was yeah, like so, purple yeah. and orange, the yes. trees were. So it was like no sort of like filters or anything on it. So I, I made a, a forest and that was fine. Oh, no one ever questioned it. But a lot of the paint jobs and like the characters and the actors and stuff were constantly like, you know, that needs to be this, that, and the other. Yeah, because that was what they did. They yeah, finished yeah. the mess with the colour. But you look at Lego, yeah. and that looks nothing like a human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. fine. Standards, They're accepted. Standards have definitely stopped at Star Wars, haven't they? <laughs> so but the funny thing is to say that then when you consider the three and a half inch action figures yeah a lot of them were so wildly oh different yeah. To, yeah yeah to mm. what they you yeah. know yeah yeah There's i mean i had this i mean i did work for um hasbro and they were working for oh, yeah, disney license and disney was just awful <laughs> because you know they would say you know they, they, they would come back and say uh, alice in wonderland 
it's not right. Um, we need, you need to change the eyes. And I said, okay, how do you want to change the eyes? Um, and the quote was, make it look more quizzical. <laughs> Quizical. What do you do with that? I used you to know? get that. that the yeah. office was like, it needs a bit more. Yeah, are you going to define? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is that? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more. Ooga. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll just get that out of my box. I've, show. I've always thought that a good art director is worth his or her weight in gold. Yeah. You know, someone who can articulate that idea that's come from top and get the artist to make that thing is that's just gold. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it, it's all part of the same like machine, isn't it? Really, you want mm. to be trying to get the best out of it. Yeah, communication. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Chris Davis uh, is saying, has there ever been? Uh, uh, has he ever come up with a design that he was told was too complex, expensive to make? Uh, and has the three D printer revolution fixed issues like that? Um, yeah, three D is pretty much you, you can do pretty much anything. Mm. You can make scary, scary scale things you know so definitely the digital thing has done that um in terms of um sculpting for workshop no because usually what would happen is that we would only get to sculpt something if it was needed yeah yeah you know there was there was very very little stuff that was just made on spec you know um the closest thing we got was i made a tyranid um it was a plastic master for a tyranid kind of like queen uh, okay, yeah, yeah. and they looked at it and they said nah it's too close to the movie uh, oh yeah. to so aliens, aliens yeah. so yeah, yeah to aliens so that just went in pretty much went in the bin oh. really you know which was a shame you know but in those days these were all models made in um, what was called foam board which is a tool board that is used in the pattern making industry for cars and it's kind of like aero, like very, very, very fine scale oh, yeah. aero. Yeah, and you yeah. can cut it so easily, yeah. but you can put a finish on it. It was great. Uh, it was easy to work with. Um, so a lot of the, the this model was built out of that with odd bits of that brown clay on it. Yeah, so yeah. It was yeah. A very, these were only temporary solutions. Yeah, yeah. Um, in those days. Um, so, yeah, so that didn't see the light of day, didn't, didn't leave the studio. Oh, yeah, it's uh, a, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, so this is probably jumps onto what you've got here actually because mm. I know you brought that book in. Yeah. Uh, is there a set in world that currently doesn't have a tabletop game that Bob would love to see become one? If not, if you were able to create minis for a brand new set in, what would it be? Well, as you see, I brought this. Um, this was a book that I discovered at New York about a month ago. It's what they call an agnostic rule set. So it doesn't. It's not really trying to select push one manufacturer's figures. Uh, sci-fi uh, the setting is Mars um, great cover it, it is good. yeah yeah and it's 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 kind of like it, it's been successful in France it's a French set of rules it's been around for a couple of years and done pretty well over there and it's now got uh, an English translation with the help of Nick at North Star um, and so this is doing the rounds and I've been speaking to the chaps who wrote this and I'm, I'm going to make some some figures they've trolled through my website yeah, yeah and they've got loads of it's again it's like kill team yeah you you build a team of you know five to ten models um maybe 12 and uh and you just face off yeah. on the table with that's that, cool yeah using these rules um so this is what i'm currently working with just now so um i think john's going to help um with this maybe getting some print done and we're, we're toying with the idea of pre-printing gangs uh, okay you know, yeah. oh, cool. and yeah. boxing them so that yeah, yeah. so that they'll be available uh, here and over the water um to play this game um but i dare i dare say you could probably transpose that and and you could, and because of the way this is written you could bring your kill team boys and girls into this as well yeah yeah you know yeah, that's not a problem yeah. so that that's the one I'm, I'm working on at the moment but i'm i'm open to any of these things i like the idea uh, which the original rogue trader had which was it was almost agnostic of course we were trying to sell space marines and of yeah, course we we're yeah. trying to sell orcs and on left right and center but we made no bones that you could use any figure you yeah, wanted yeah yeah you know and I loved that idea. Yeah. That this was about gaming. It was about getting on the table with some miniatures. It wasn't about 
someone telling you that figures that figures okay, but that figure isn't. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was looking through the Realm of Chaos book mm. uh, a couple of nights ago, and it's very similar. Like the army list is like you can have 120 Chaos Thugs, just describes roughly what weapons are armed with. Yeah, there could be yeah. any models, right? Uh, yeah, really? even like the Chaos Marines, it doesn't really say it has to be this design of Chaos Marine. It could just be whatever you want it to be. Yeah, as long as it's got a gun. Yes, um, and That's you have fine. like five of them. But yeah, mm. like you say, it's it, yeah. That, that, that's cool. That that, that gets a yeah, lot of love from, from the peeps. That does the, the workshop business model is is well. Let's just say it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? It does. Yeah. Um, but part of that is it's got it, it controls. Yeah. You know. I mean, I'm, I'm a stickler for it because I've been, I'm really into a, 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 it's an Age of Sigma, pretty much Warhammer. Mm. Uh, it's a, a skirmish game called Warcry. And, mm -hmm. and you have like bands and they come as box bands. But yes. then you can add more when they die, you can replace them. So mm. they, they give you like a, a, a selection of warriors that you can get in there. But as you play through campaigns, you can add more if you wanted to or yes. have less or whatever. So I've been like actually looking at third party figures now. And there's like a, I've got, I've made some Sisters of Sigma. Um, mm -hmm. And I've used like some Sisters of Battle for that. Um, and I was like, I want a dwarf. I want a dwarf to like a warrior nun. Why can't I have a female dwarf and my sisters are similar? Because they're, they're all like the elves, the humans, and the dwarves are all aligned together now. So yes. I, I got a 3D model from We Print Minis from yeah. John. I was like, I'm going to paint her up in the same colour scheme. Fits yeah. in nicely. Uh, yeah. So, and I'm like, I don't have to worry about that now. If I want to play games at home with my friends, mm -hmm. they're not going to go, you can't use that because that's yeah. not a workshop model. Don't care. Yep. Yeah. 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 Which is, you know, it should be about the. The, that evening or afternoon exactly with yeah. your friends yeah having yeah. having a, a good time yeah so that, that's really cool I'm really in, interested by it. I'm going to get a copy of that myself and yeah. um, uh, I suppose if you're really into like things like uh, oh what's the TV show about Mars the belt oh, oh, Expanse the Expanse yeah, yeah. so Which do you want to reenact the Expanse yeah I mean that is like yeah, a rule set I think that that would be the model that's inside yeah the, the, you know the, the back story is all about kind of like conspiracies and you know, so there's, there's 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 depth to it, which is I suppose it's their version of chaos in a sense, isn't yeah. it? You know, there's there's something going on. Yeah, yeah. And we don't know what it is. Yeah, you know? yeah. And that's 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 part of that story. You know. Well, we have plenty more questions, so sorry we couldn't get through more because we are running long time. Okay. Um, and battery percent is seventeen oh. so far. So we're just going to quickly go. Over, so when we had Pete the War Gamer on, we did a giveaway for April. Oh, um, right. So we're just going to go through some models. So if you do want to get hold of some of these kits if you join our patreon it could be any tier uh we will be put well there's a post up where it's uh, the video for pete the wargamer all you need to do is answer this question which is what is pete the wargamer's first name is it a steve b stevie c steve-o or d pete <laughs> i know it's tricky it's tricky it's a tricky one uh, we expect a lot of our that's, that's we, we expect a lot of our patrons Bob. You know? <laughs> so you could win uh morgan ra uh oh yes these are nice a, a death company intercessor yeah one of yeah. those one of these it's not that one he's All in right. it it's the, it's the peach looking one with a bold head <laughs> uh, we haven't got a Jeff or a Dave um, no I'm, but I'm, or a Pat to, we'll have to maybe when get near me if we sell it if we have a space wolf one or something yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then we have some orcs we have Mozrog Skull Skagrag Skag bag. I'll get that. Okay. Skagrag bag. Yeah. Uh, so that's possible. What do you have there? We have a Nemesis Dread Knight. Uh, you could be in for one of them. This fella. Thank you very much, oh, Debbie oh, McGee. Oh, 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 oh. Debbie McGee and Bob uh, Bob Naismith. Pretty much the same. I know. The same. And then we have Morak as well. So five yeah. lovely gifts to give away. So yeah, just this weighs a ton, by the way. It is just. just <laughs> I've got that one. It does weigh a fair chunk. I mean, we need to take the scenery out. It's not so bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So all you need to do is. Give the correct answer. Pop that into the comments of the Pete the Wargamer video for April's giveaway. Wow. Uh, and we will I, choose them at the end of the month. I may join myself. Yeah, <laughs> please do. You, you, yeah. you could get Morik, you could get Morgan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, pretty good. Uh, question, though. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the question yeah. <laughs> well it's uh, no, I know I mean I mean it could have been worse I mean if, if it was like a new one and you were on the start of the month it could have been <laughs> yeah, what yeah. is Bob Naismith's first been. name <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is Bob Naismith's first name we could do that <laughs> first model called because yeah. I remember we used to workshop used to I, see, I still used say we used to name them all mm. every single model yeah name every one. single one even and, the demons uh, the goblins and all you know I miss that Scrag lag, the yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like dribble snot and yeah. sca- oh, sc- scabby balls and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> weird names like what why is he called that oh he's got two balls and he's got scabs on it there must be a reason why they don't do it now maybe <laughs> no. it's translation maybe you maybe know. I think translation yeah yeah let's go with that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you as always Bob for no, it's uh, been really good being fun. on the show uh, Bob's website uh, We Print Minis will be in the links as well so check yes. those guys out because they he makes some amazing stuff uh, and I said before we went on I don't know if we mentioned it when I was on, on live about Dave just going you made so many models oh yeah, Dave, yeah. Dave, if, when Dave Andrews seems impressed that that to me is it's hard <laughs> well, I say it's hard to yeah it's just it, it it's great fun yeah so really thank you is. very much for coming on uh, yeah going well, back it was really kind to you thank you yeah, very much yeah Retur- our first returning guest oh so we're, well we're I know where you live now you know so <laughs> just every week <laughs> be, yeah, be on the door and just, don't answer it pretend we're not in <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> it's Bob again. He won't leave us alone. Just have him on. Just have him on. <laughs> just another one. We won't rec- we won't edit it. We'll just say it's <laughs> We'll just talk to him for an hour. It's fine. It's like the shining. You're just coming here for the heat like the rest of us. So Pat's not here right now, so you don't care. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, Pat, I hope, I hope you get well. Um, All right. Yeah, yeah, on, well, on Pat. the settee with a, like a Bless lem sip or something like I that. Just, yeah, visions of a little, like, warm ta- little warm flannel over his head <laughs> and a right. thermometer in his mouth. Yes. Got his dressing going. On the special pajamas, oh, yeah, oh, we've got to wear those. Yeah. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and check out our Patreon. And thank you thank to you. our Patreon supporters, you guys are amazing. So, thanks very uh, much, guys. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. All Bob. the best, See you troops. Thank See you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.